Back on this side of the pond, Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign ramping up efforts to tear down a book filled with allegations that are threatening her White House hopes. The book is called Clinton Cash. It details an alleged pattern of behavior where former Secretary of State, now presidential candidate Hillary Clinton and President Bill Clinton have profited off of relationships with individuals and entities who had business before her State Department. Over the past weeks, and especially the last few days, the campaign, allies, and even President Clinton have gone all out to try to discredit this book and its author. Even the guy that wrote the book, apparently, had to admit under questioning that he didn't have a shred of evidence for this. He just sort of thought he'd throw it out there and see if it'd fly. It's full of sloppy research and attacks pulled out of thin air with no actual evidence. It's a book that's written uh, by a former Bush operative. He's cherry-picked information that's been disclosed uh, and woven a bunch of conspiracy theories uh, about it. There's everything here, but that she did anything of it. This is spaghetti journalism. Let's just throw spaghetti at the wall and hope something sticks. Joining us now, the spaghetti maker. Peter Schweitzer, author of Clinton Cash, the untold story of how and why foreign governments and businesses helped make Bill and Hillary rich. Peter, good to see you. So, I mean, obviously what those clips show is they're a little worried about you. And that's, that's obvious. Uh, but their main line of attack seems to be there's no there there. There's no smoking gun, something you've admitted yourself. Well, what I argue is the smoking gun. I don't have an email that says, do this and we'll give you money. What I do have is a pattern of behavior that I think is very troubling. Uh, and the pattern is revealed in dozens of examples where there's an influx of money to the Clintons. Hillary Clinton then shortly thereafter takes favorable actions for the individuals who are giving them the money. You could look at one or two of these, Megan, and say, come on, it's a coincidence. But when you see it replicated dozens of times, I think it warrants serious investigation by people that have subpoena power, that can look at emails, that can look at correspondence. They don't seem to think it counts unless there is direct <laughs> proof. They don't seem to believe in circumstantial evidence when it comes to their behavior. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, here's what I like to say, Megan. Imagine three years from now, we have a Secretary of Defense not named Clinton, and she has a private foundation with her husband, and a small company has business before the Pentagon, needs Pentagon approval for something, and the shareholders in that company send $145 million to that family foundation. Are people going to just ask them? Did anything happen here and we're going to take their word that everything was good? Of course not. We would investigate and look into it, except for the fact that when it involves the Clintons, they seem to operate on a level that's very different than anybody else in American well, politics. Well, what should happen, though, because now she is going to testify before the Benghazi committee, at least. So, I mean, that she'll get asked and she'll she'll have to answer, correct? Uh, yes, um, you know, I don't know in, in terms of the committee what the scope of their questioning is going to be. But look, I think we need to have somebody that has subpoena power look into some of these deals. We need to look at some of the inflated speaking fees that Bill Clinton got as she was considering everything from the Keystone Pipeline uh, to who, uh, issues who related to it? sanctions who specifically? on Iran. I mean, O'Reilly's calling for the FBI to do it. Who specifically? Well, I think the FBI is an excellent suggestion. I think you could have congressional committees do it. Frankly, I think I'd like to see somebody with subpoena power that is a prosecutor, possibly even convene a grand jury. I mean, look, you look at the Menendez case, you look at the case down in Virginia, you look out in Oregon with Keith Sauber. The pattern of behavior here is, is somewhat similar, and it, it's crying out for further investigation. Peter Schweitzer, thanks for being here. Thanks, Megan.